Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about linear and nonlinear functions. We've been talking about linear, linear functions a great deal, and you remember that they can be graphed as a straight line. How about a nonlinear function? Do you think that's a straight line? Yeah, I bet not, but we're going to find out. Now, I want to rem remind you of a distinction um, between two kinds of domains. You remember that if we had an equation, y equals 2.5x, we could graph that equation, or we could create a chart of that equation. And, that, and if we graphed it, it would either be represented as a straight line or a series of points, depending on whether the domain of the function was continuous or discrete. Now, if we could only get x values that were whole numbers, then they would be discrete x values, and the domain would be discrete. However, if we could get a 1.5, so that there were values between 1 and 2, and we could get a 2.67 showing that there were values between 2 and 3, then it would be a continuous uh, domain. If it were a discrete domain, it would graph as a series of points. If it was a continuous domain, it would graph as a line. And that's a linear expression, a linear function. And the implication is that for a value of 2 or of 1.5, we could go up and find a value of y. But over here, at a value of 1.5, we don't hit a line, so there's no place to go over and come up with an x value or a y value. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you on this. You remember that on a line or a linear equation, there's a constant rate of change. As x changes, the increase in y remains constant. And we can chart that this way. If we, the increase in x between 1 and 2 is 1. The increase in y between 2 and a half and 5 is 2 and a half. If we go down to the next pair, we've got an increase in x of 1 and an increase in y of 2 and a half. And that goes on throughout the whole series of numbers. It's a constant rate of change. So some functions are linear and they graph as a straight line, but other functions aren't linear and don't graph as a straight line. Now in our last example it was a linear equation and it graphed as a continuous straight line. And the rate of change was always the same. It had a continuous rate of change. Well, what if we had the expression y equals 2.5 divided by x? Would that be a straight line? Well, let's create a chart. And let's put in x values and find the, uh, the resulting y value. And we've done that here and here. Now, if we graph that, that's what it looks like. Is that a straight line? Well, no, it's not. It curves. And what's that curve mean? That means there's not a constant rate of change. If we were to calculate the rate of change, the change in x over the change in y, and by the way, that delta means change in. So this is the change in x in this column and the change in y in this column. x is always increasing by 1. As we go from this to this, we got an increase of, of, of 1 in x. But the y values change in different amounts. Every y values change is different from any of the others. So it's a non-constant rate of change. And you remember that that rate of change is the slope of the line. So you've got a constant slope or a constant rate of change. And one way to find out if an expression is a linear expression or a non-linear expression is to try to force that expression into the slope-intercept form. The slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus k, where m is the slope of the line and k is the y-intercept. 
Now we can rewrite that first equation, y equals 2.5x, as y equals 2.5x plus 0, because the intercept is 0, and, this, and there's a constant uh, slope of 2.5. But the second equation, y equals 2.5 divided by x, can't be rewritten into slope-intercept form. So, the second equation is not linear. Well, what if somebody had a chart like the one I've got on the board here, and they ask you, is this a linear or a non-linear function? Could you figure it out? Well, actually there's three ways you could go about trying to find out if this was a linear function or a nonlinear function. The first way would be to add a couple of columns to the chart showing the change in x and the change in y. And you remember if it's a linear function, we're going to have a constant rate of change. The change is always going to be the same. So, what I've done is take a, the change as I go from one row to the next row in my x value and then I, I also figure out the change as I go from one row to the next row in my y value and I do that for the entire chart and I end up with changes of x of 1 each time we go down and a change in y for each change of 1 and x I get a change in y of 4.25 now if I've got a constant rate of change and that's pretty constant, then the function is linear. Well, here's another way we could do it. We could try to create an equation of this line or of this function and see if that equation was in the slope-intercept format. And to do that, we'd first have to figure out what the slope was. And our slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. So I get it, the change in y, 4.25, and divide that by the change in x, 1, and I end up with a slope of 4.25. And then I'd have to figure out what the y-intercept is. Well, the y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. The What crosses the y-axis where x is 0, so my y-intercept is 6. So I could write this function this way y equals the slope, 4.25 times x, plus the y-intercept, 6. y equals 4.25x plus 6. And since I can write this in slope-intercept format, it's a linear uh, function. The last way to figure out it was if it's a linear function is to graph it, which I've done here. And if it graphs as a straight line, it's a linear function. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Is 3x minus y equals 2 a linear or a nonlinear function? Well, we could try to graph it, although it would be a little hard. We'd have to manipulate the equation. And we could try to create a table, but again, we'd have to manipulate the equation to do that. So maybe we need to manip manipulate the equation, and that may be as far as we need to go. Because if we manipulate the equation, and it's in slope-intercept form, then we know it's a linear equation. So let's do that. I want to get rid of everything on the left side of the equation but y because I wanted to read y equals something so I gotta move everything that's not a y to one side of the equation and leave just y on the other and I've done that here I want to actually I want to get rid of that negative y so I'm gonna move it to the other side of the equation to do that I'm gonna add a positive y to it and then I want to get rid of the two on the right side of the equation so I'm gonna subtract two from both sides of the equation. And when I do that, my y's cancel each other out and I just have 3x minus 2 remaining. And on the right side of the equation, my 2's cancel each other out and all I have left is a y. Now I'm going to rewrite that to put it in the format you're used to looking at where the y is on the left side and it rewrites y equals 3x minus 2 where I've got a constant rate of change or slope and I've got a y-intercept, so this is a linear function. 
it's in the format y equals mx plus k. How about this chart? Is that a linear function or not? Well, we could graph it. We could try to uh, create an equation and see if it's in uh, slope-intercept form. Or we could just extend the chart and get the changes in x and the changes in y, which I've done right here. As we go from the first x to the second x, I've got an increase in th of 3. As we go from the first y to the second y, I've got an increase of 81. Between the 15 and the 22x values, I've got an increase of 7. Between the, uh, the corresponding 225 and 484 values of y, I've got an increase of 259.0. And I could do that for that value and that value, and that's what I come up with. Now, it's a little hard to compare that and see if that's a constant rate of change, because our x's are not increasing by a constant rate. So it's going to be a little hard to look at the y's and see if they're increasing by a constant rate. But I can do that real easily if I figure out the slope. Remember, the slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. So if I divide 81 by 3, I have a slope of 27. And if I divide 259 by 7, I get a slope of 37. And you can see that these slopes are not the same, and nor are the last two. So, we don't have a constant rate of change, and this function is nonlinear. How about this one? We've got a formula v equals x cubed. Is this a linear function? Well, there's three ways we could solve this problem. We could chart values of x and the corresponding values of y, and then we could find out the change in x and the change in y to see if we had a constant rate of change or a constant slope. And I've done that here and I get different values for change in y with constant values for change in x and I get different slopes. So I know this is not a linear function. I could also graph the function and it would graph like that which is clearly not a line or a straight line so that also shows it's not a linear function. But the easiest way to do it it should just take that equation, v equals x3, and think about, is that in slope-intercept format? Do I have y, or in this case v, equals the slope times x, not x to the second or x to the third, but x to the first power, plus k? Well, no, I don't, because my x is cubed. And it can't be cubed in the slope-intercept format. So, the volume of a cube is not a linear function. Well, that's our lesson on comparing linear and nonlinear functions. It's really not that hard. But you should go and test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and try your luck at the worksheet on comparing linear and nonlinear functions. And then go on back to MasterMath and take the quiz on comparing linear and nonlinear functions. If you have any questions, go back and look at this video again. And be sure to come back to MasterMath soon.